Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 515 City Council meeting of October 23rd, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Parlier. Here. Councilmember Rivera. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Weir. Councilmember Smith. I'm here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Well, welcome to everyone. For those of you who are standing in the back, we would ask you to sit down for uh, fire regulations and go ahead. We have plenty of seats, and uh, we have some seats here on the side. And then can somebody please close the back door, too? But uh, come on in and sit down, uh, and then we will get started as soon as everyone is seated. Welcome everyone. We are so glad to see a full chamber and uh, have all of you engaged in the civic process. Particularly happy to see students. We have roadrunners here, so CSUB students, raise your hands. Oh, there are a lot of you. Okay, very good. Welcome. Uh, we have renegades. Renegades, welcome. And then something unusual, we have high school students actually here. So we have five students from Wasco High. Tigers, welcome. Right. They're here to write a report on uh, municipal governance, so hopefully we have something good to say tonight about that. And welcome to the rest of you. Uh, we now have the pleasure of having our invocation led by Reverend Sylvia Lack, and she is from Vessels of Honor. I recently saw her supporting Teen Challenge, and she supports a lot of activities like that are related to uh, people who are going through challenging times and recovery services. And then following Pastor Lack's invocation, we have the honor of having a superstar from uh, CSUB lead us in the flag salute. And Denise Selva, who's a graduate student at uh, CSUB, is the superstar from CSUB who was chosen by the California State University system to receive the CSU Trustees Award for Outstanding Achievement. There is one awarded to each school in the CSU system, and it's given to a student who's demonstrated superior academic performance, personal accomplishment, community service, and um, we are just so glad for a student such as uh, Denise in our community. She's the first person in her family to attend college she mentors at-risk youth through AmeriCorps, and she is currently in her second year of the Master's of Science in Counseling Psychology and is doing research on the success of Latinx first-generation college students and also uh, offers low-cost therapy to our community members, and we are so proud of your accomplishments. At this point, would you all stand up? And we're going to have Pastor Lack lead us in the invocation. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a, a long line of family from Bakersfield. Bakersfield is near and dear to my heart. Um, over 30 years ago, my late husband and I pioneered the church vessels of honor. But way prior to that, my grandfather was one of the founding members of um, the Greek Orthodox Church here in town. And my second cousin was the mayor in the early 50s, Manuel Kernikus. So um, Bakersfield is very, very special to me, especially since I'm a native of Bakersfield. You know, I'm reminded of um, uh, a story that Albert Einstein was en route by train to a destination and Years ago, they would give you a little ticket, and it would tell you where your starting point was and where your destination is. 
and the conductor came by and he looked uh, at Dr. Einstein and he was on the floor hunting for something and he said, I've lost my ticket. He said, Doctor, we know who you are. I know you wouldn't get on the train without a ticket, so don't worry. But as he headed down the aisle, he looked back and still, still saw Mr. Einstein looking for his ticket. And he came back and he said, don't worry, I know who you are. He said, I know who I am also, son, but what I don't know is where I'm going. <laughs> Bakersfield knows who it is, but thanks to you, we, you know and we know where we're going. It's in a good direction. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your word says in Romans 13, that all authority comes from you, God. And you put those in authority that you have placed here. Father, these men and women are not here because of an election. They are here because you look through time and you saw them at this time very precariously placed for our good. You said in James 1, 5, if any lack wisdom, let them ask you, and you will give it to them generously without rebuke or blame. Father, I thank you for your wisdom, setting with everyone you've placed in this authority, that you, O oh God, will assist them, guide them, and direct them in where Bakersfield is going where we're headed, because you, God, we believe you to get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And Denise now. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated, and Denise, stay right there. I'm coming down just for a minute. Denise, our community is so proud of you. So you are ch the chosen representative of the CSU Bakersfield. Uh, you are the shining star, and it's my honor to be able to present the Mayor's Medal to you. You're free to leave if you uh, have other applications, but you're welcome to stay. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn your phones off, and in keeping with council policy, council members aren't allowed to receive or send communication during the meeting. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but isn't allowed at other times. And for safety reasons, no signs are allowed in the council chambers. We very much appreciate your cooperation. Madam Clerk, would you please read the first item? Under presentations, we have a certificate of recognition to David Gleason, owner of the Polo Saddle Drive Home, awarded Yard of the Season, Summer 2019. Mr. Gleason, come on up here, and uh, Kathy Butler, and if you want to bring your realtor, any other family members also. It's always a joy to be able to recognize community members who beautify our community. And let's first take a look at what we have ahead there. So it's never easy when you're trying to conserve water. And uh, you have done a stellar job of that. And so for that reason, uh, you have been awarded Yard of the Season. Kathy Butler, who is our advisor with Keep Bakersfield Beautiful, would you offer some comments, please? 
Well, this is always a fun task to do because there's so many beautiful yards in Bakersfield. But it's when it's sustainable and beautiful, we recognize it. And this is for the summer, and we appreciate your um, uh, dedication to maintaining this yard. And I understand you brought your realtor with you, so and your family. And we thank you for all your hard work on behalf of Keep Bakersfield Beautiful. It's our pleasure to present you with this sign, and you're welcome to make a few comments once you introduce your family and your realtor. Well, all right, we'll take a picture of this maybe. First off, I just want to say thank you to my family for getting me to the position that I'm at right now. I'm 22 years old, and I bought my first house. Right. Big thanks to my family. Uh, second off, I'd like to thank my realtor, Bryce Wolf. Um, when looking for their house, I wanted something that would be easily maintained. Um, just starting my career, so maintenance would take a lot of time. And he found not only a house that had an easily maintainable front yard, but it was water conservative, which we very much need in the city of Bakersfield. So thank you, Bryce. You'll get to proudly display that sign for a period of time. At this time, we'll receive public statements. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. If you have written comments that are longer than your statements, we ask you to give those to the clerk, and she will give copies to the council. Please avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. Due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, council members can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. However, they can refer your matter to the committee or request that staff contact you. If you are here on hearing items 10A and 10B, now isn't the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity later on in the meeting when those items are called. So Madam Clerk, would you please read our speaker cards and the first, call the first speaker, please. Mayor, we have received eight speaker cards this evening, three regarding separate subjects and five regarding the deferred business item. The first public speaker is Tina Bergstrin. Welcome. Would you please introduce here. yourself? Yes, I'm, my name is Tina Bingston, and I live in the Cottonwood, I guess you guys call it the e southeast area. I live at Cottonwood and Brooks, and a lot of the residents, we have some concerns, and I'm very general concerns. The first one is um, regarding the lighting in our area. The street lights are very few, and they're very far apart. There's a lot of foot traffic out there. And not only is it a hazard because we, we have no sidewalks in a lot of areas, but it's most mainly because of there's the lighting and what lighting is there is very poor. Um, there's between East Plans and uh, um, I believe it's Panama, there is absolutely no stop sign. And where I live, I can hear the cars revving from East Plans speeding past my house until I can't hear them any further. So there's been a couple deaths right by my house from pedestrians being hit because there's no nothing to prevent the people from driving whatever speed they like down that, in that area. Um, the third concern is there's a lot of street damage in our area. We get a lot of cosmetic fixes every year, the little, little oil, a little whatever you guys put on there, but the potholes are still existing or getting larger into where, I mean, it's, 
is, is I'm pretty sure is damaging a lot of the vehicles. So I mean, they I think we need to have those addressed, been being cosmetically maintained. Um, as far as there's a project that's supposed to be getting built on East Plans and Cottonwood, I believe it was the GPA as a zone change 180366, proposing a, I believe it's going to be a 24 hour gas station and mini mart. Um, the residents there, we complained and complained, but I think that's a bad idea for our area, um, taking on the history of the property owner and his other two businesses. We wanted to um, bring our area up in the the business owner, progressive business owner, he has a bad reputation and bad business practices. And so I think that's going to be a bad thing if that project continues to be approved and, and is um, pushed forward. And I believe that's, that's it. Thank, Thank you, you for you. sharing. Next speaker, please. Isaiah Crompton. Welcome, Mr. Compton. Would you raise the mic, please? Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Is there anyone from the bank? Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool. All right. Uh, Honorable Mayor uh, Karen Go, Councilmen, Council uh, Women. Uh, my name is Isaiah Crompton. <clears throat> I'm a local community advocate, business owner concerned residents from Ward 1. I'm here with Harlem, and uh, we're here. Harlem was uh, one of the owners of the Frink's firm, and we are here on behalf of our community to, to make the request that is relates to the MLK Community Initiative. October 8th, 2019, we held a community meeting on Cottonwood Road at the Jerusalem Mission Church with about 65 to 70 in attendance with many leaders, pastors, and pastors. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman uh, Willie Rivera for your attendance and engagement, as well as Supervisor Leticia Perez, um, Nina Carter, and Jason Cater from the City of Bakersfield Development Services Department. We also thank Congress, uh, TJ, Congressman T.J. Cox, Assemblyperson Rudy Salas for sending representatives, as well as Git Bus. That kind of representation gave us the community a light, and we thank the Frink firm for engaging it, for organizing it, I'm sorry. <coughs> We were able to discover an extensive list of needs for the community, and we would love to share that list with, in, to, with any of you who would like or are interested in a copy. We have already forwarded a list to Councilman Willie Rivera. Some of these things are on, have been on the list for years, decades, with no resolve, basic things Basic things every community, uh, every other community enjoys. It's time for the leaders to support the Cottonwood MLK area. The residents are organizing and preparing to advocate to engage through activism. I am here on behalf of a very concerned group of residents who are tired of being overlooked when it comes to the general plan and resources and support. The residents in Ward 1 are asking for basic things like sidewalks, curves and gutters, lights, improved parking, improved parks, excuse Mr. me. Mr. Crompton, your park. time is up. Can you please wrap up your comments? OK. It's time for our leaders in the city City Council to support the basic needs of the community that pay taxes. Like every other community, I stand here 
with, our, with, with other residents in our chambers to ask that we not be overlooked. Thank you, Mr. Crompton. Thank you, and uh, if you would like to forward that list of uh, comments to us, you can do it right through the city clerk, and she'll be happy to get copies of uh, what, whatever you've written also that you didn't get to finish to the council members. Thank you for sharing with us. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. And just a reminder, we have three minutes, and when you see the yellow light uh, flashing, that's just about the time to end your statements. Heather Panella. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Heather Panella, and I'm here on behalf of Keep Bakersfield Beautiful. I uh, just wanted to share a couple of things with you all. Um, this Saturday is Make a Difference Day, and we will be out as a group to keep downtown Bakersfield beautiful. There will be opportunities for tree planting, flower planting, litter pickup, um, some painting projects, etc. So that will be Saturday. We meet at 7 a.m. behind the Fox Theater. Um, so please come out and encourage your residents to come out. I've also shared a flyer with you coming up on November the 9th. We have America Recycles Day. This is a great event. It'll be held behind Mechanics Bank Arena. Um, this is an opportunity for residents of Bakersfield to responsibly do away with trash, recycling, etc. cetera. Um, tires will be accepted at this event, e-waste, shredding, uh, household construction waste will be accepted at this event clothing shoes, so it's kind of a catch-all for everything that does not belong in your brown bin. Um, there's flyers out. I know that there's information available um, on americarecyclesday.org. Also, robabankarena.com, AEG, slash One Earth has information, but we encourage all residents to take advantage of this free event to bring their items down and keep them out of the landfill. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Panella, and thank you for your service on Keep Baker So Beautiful. Next speaker, please. Mayor, the following uh, five speakers will be speaking regarding the deferred business item. The first speaker, Bill Decay. Thanks, and as he's coming forward, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Bakersfield College Professor Corny Rodriguez. You are somewhere here, aren't you? Thank you so much, and you have a lot of students here. Uh, you also have your Roadrunner students here, so thank you for investing in them, and we're glad to have you and the students here. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. I'm Bill DeCary, Mayor Go and Council Members. I'm here to speak on Agenda Item 12 on a deferred business regarding accessory dwelling units. I support option two, which is a city ordinance regulating ADUs that mirrors newly adopted state law for the following four reasons. First, under option two, impact fees are charged as provided by state law. Option one waives all ADU impact fees, which sets up potential litigation concerning gift of public funds, among other possibilities. Second, waiving fees after Bakersfield residents stepped up and voted to have their sales tax rate increased to fund city government sends the wrong message. While developers detest fees, their costs are doing business just like labor and materials. Third, remember in the current city budget, 11.5 million of major end revenue is appropriated for homelessness, with 5 million designated for affordable housing. With these large appropriations, waiving fees for city services makes no sense. Fourth, much of the resident outrage with option one concerns deletion of the owner occupancy requirement, essentially decimating R1 single family zoning. Option two restores owner occupancy beginning January 1, 2025. Therefore, I respectfully request that you vote for option two, first reading of the ordinance, which is compatible with state accessory dwelling unit law. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Joseph Candle. Welcome, Mr. Candle. Please Thank introduce you. yourself. My name is Joseph Candle. 
there's an old, old adage that reads, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Just because the supermajority government of the state of California has decided to enact socialist legislation, is that justification for the city of Bakersfield to blindly follow suit against its tax-paying R1 property owners? All single-family resident uh, R1 communities to date have been built, resided in, taxes paid, collected for some, in, ca in some cases, 40 years of a working lifetime. Uh, they have been, they were built and paid for with the caveat between this r the resident and the city of Bakersfield that the, that the uh, residential neighborhood communities would remain into perpetuity not negated and taken away by a mere vote of the city council. In my opinion, the city of Bakersfield is now attempting to amend the city code as breaching a covenant of zoning between its existing property, uh, owning, owning s citizens, and itself without any uh, sort of type of grandfathering clause uh, to, uh, to accommodate that. In my opinion, this is wrong. I, s I also suggest that the city of Bakersfield, in essence, is making a taking without compensation when, in, when from its R1 residents by breaching its current covenant uh, by potentially tens, tens of thousands of dollars per single family resident. Also, in my opinion, the current uh, proposed amendment change is a trashing of the Declaration of Independence, going right back to the basics. Life of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness clause out of the Declaration of Independence of an individual's right to live in a single family neighborhood community within the city of Bakersfield. Proposed amendments should be judged by whether they increase or decrease the quality of life of its residents. This proposed amendment certainly decreases life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness of its R1 citizens. There is n nothing but overwhelming negative results of overcrowding to be received by the R1 residents resulting from this proposed change. Statistics indicate the uh, city of Bakersfield has a population approaching 400,000 persons. Further statistics indicate that there are approximately 115,000 single-family owner-occupied residents, approximating 230,000 adult-paying individuals. The city is purporting a homeless population of approximating 100,000 non-paying citizens. Additional data indicates that approximately 80% of the homeless have either mental issues or drug issues, of which this proposed amendment will not solve Mr. that Kendall. issue. Mr. Kendall, your time is up. Can you just um, Can bring your comments to a close, please? Pardon me? Your time is up. Please bring your comments to a close. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, and feel free, if you have additional comments, to give those to the clerk. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Gary Simmons. Well, Good evening. My name is Gary Simmons. Been here and in the past, and I'm not going to cite ordinances. I'm not going to cite laws. I'm going to speak from the heart of the condition and the calamity that our state of California is in, which transcends right to our city of Bakersfield. I want to commend uh, Councilman Freeman. We were here last month, month and a half ago, and requested an extension to educate our community and try to get them educated, and we had three no votes and four yes votes, and I thank you for making that motion. In regards to the no votes, it was a sellout to your voters. You denied them the opportunity to learn and understand more about the risk of their properties and their investments. A no vote was a denial to communicate with your voters. It was a major disappointment. You shake your head all day long, Mr. Gonzalez. It was a major disappointment for you to do that. In the last six weeks, the education that our community has, has, has achieved and received has been phenomenal. The lady had a great message, where's Bakersfield going? The unfortunate part is we got a homeowner in here, 23 years old, first home, first investment that hasn't a clue 
that his investment will never, never achieve what his hopes are. Because we live in a state, because we have special interests in our community that are designed to support the building industry. We all know where this is going. There's public outcry right now regarding special interests. We have to pay close attention to what we're doing and how we represent our community. There's hundreds of thousands of people and millions and millions of dollars. We should not be coming to you. You should be coming to us. We're not hearing from you. So that's where I'm at. I'm hoping for a continuance, that we continue to educate the people, we can continue to send a message out, how to defend themselves, how to protect their investments, how to communicate with our city government. But we can't keep coming to you asking for help. You've got to meet us, not in a public park for a half hour, you've got to meet us in the community. And that's all I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna put anybody down. I thank you again, Mr. Freeman, for your, for your foresight and asking for an extension because we were gonna sign a bill, sign something in here, we didn't even know what we were signing. You're representing the building commission. I would recommend to you, Mr. Smith, that you step down. And that you don't, you excuse yourself from voting because of your special interest regarding the building industry. You need to step down. I'll give my 10 seconds left back to the next speaker. I'm a compassionate, passionate entrepreneur in Bakersfield, California. I love it here and I'm not leaving. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Next speaker, please. Janice Knowlton. Welcome, Ms. Knowlton. Hi, I'm Janice Knowlton, and I'm here to talk about the same topic of Mr. Simmons. Um, I think I'm going to cut my time short because there's other people behind me with the same interest. I do agree with Mr. Simmons. Um, I'm very disappointed to hear about some of the um, developers that are on the council who are putting their own personal interests first above the citizens of Bakersfield and the county. Um, there's many citizens here um, in Bakersfield who were unaware of these situations and when brought to them, they were appalled. Not all of them could come today, um, but they are voicing their opinions now that it's been, uh, that they are aware. Um, overall, there's other options. You gave us um, two options, one and two. Um, I agree with Mr. Simmons um, that number two should be uh, voted on. And number th one um, is appalling if that should take place. It's taking away all the rights of us to have our own home um, and manage it and making everything into multi-dwelling units. Um, I think I'm going to leave it to the other speakers to fill in the details, but I think it's up to the city council to let the rest of the community, those who are blinded um, by what is going on and the quickness that the council was going to push this through. Um, there's other cities in Southern California that are going to have a lawsuit against the state for what is going through. And I think it should be considered that we join on those lawsuits um, because we have the rights as individuals to have our R1 homes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Knowlton. Next speaker, please. The final speaker this evening is John Knowlton. Welcome, Mr. Knowlton. Would you raise the microphone, please? Yes. Um, Thank you. Obviously, um, you heard from me before. Um, I agree with the uh, previous speakers. We're all pretty much in lockstep with uh, our positions on this thing. Thank you, Mr. Freeman, for getting this continuance to this point. I understand that uh, you guys are in between the state and its legislative agenda. Um, I would like you to possibly, if you can, continue this to a little later date, closer towards the uh, January 1st deadline um, to allow people to kind of digest what's going on. Um, barring that, um, option two 
is the only option that I can see. At some point, at least five years down the road, we'll get back to owner occupancy of a primary dwelling that the dwelling units are attached to. And otherwise, it, it, you, have, you have no R1 re designated residential areas anymore. You've got multifamily, you've got parking on the streets, um, and all those types of conditions. But um, I understand the council's position between the state and itself. If you can attach yourself to some of the lawsuits that might occur to relieve some of these issues, I would like to see the city do that. And um, that's all I've got to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Knowlton. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Consent calendar items 8A through 8AW. A staff memorandum has been provided for item 8C, transmitting correspondence regarding the item. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Does any council member wish to recuse themselves from an agenda item? I've received the card from Councilman Rivera that he wants to pull item 8AE, and Council Member Gonzalez wants to pull item 8 a C. Does any other council member wish to remove an item for separate consideration? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve consent items 8A through 8AW, with the exception of the aforementioned polled items, along with the agenda corrections noted by the city clerk. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimous, unanimously approved. Thank you. And now we will consider item 8AE, Council Member Rivera. Oh, I, guess I, went a, I went in the wrong order, sorry. 8AC, Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 8C with the request that staff come back at the second reading with the uh, staff presentation on this item. I'm sorry, I think there's confusion. He said A, C, and you're talking about C. Just C. C. Did I get it right? Be correct. All right. Correct. Yes. So we need to go. Has eight C. Eight. Right. Yes. So um, the item that was pulled by Councilmember Rivera is eight A E, and by Councilmember Gonzalez, you meant eight C. So uh, do we, Madam City Attorney, do we need to go back and correct the prior motion? That would consent? be. That would be. Um, that would be welcomed. Yes, please. If you could restate the motion, Vice Mayor. Just clarify, Andre, mm -hmm. Andre, yes. just state again what it is, 8C? 8C. Right. Willie, 8 A E. And, and I'm going to ask all of you in the future always to have that white form so we, it, it's hard to understand. Okay, here we are. Go I, ahead. I, I believe it was stated correctly. All right. It was form. stated correctly, I believe. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, was it stated? What's that? Was that my mistake? I, I, I just didn't see it. I think it's on Andre. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so the motion again from the vice mayor is approval of the consent calendar items 8A right. through AW, and we are pulling item 8A uh, E by Councilmember Rivera and item 8C as in cat by Councilmember Gonzalez. Okay. And that is the motion. That is the motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Okay, thank you. And now, Councilmember Gonzalez. Okay, this is regarding 8C, and the Vice Mayor had it correct. Um, 
I would like to make a motion to approve this item uh, with uh, a request that staff come back with a presentation at the second reading. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now we will consider Councilmember Rivera's item 8AE. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item is uh, an amendment to an agreement we have with Cell Environmental Inc. Um, for what I guess I've affectionately termed our poop patrol in downtown and Old Town Kern. Um, so I, I was not present for the original meeting when we approved the initial contract, but what we're looking at this evening is an amendment to um, to revise the agreement not to exceed one hundred and four thousand dollars, one hundred and four thousand dollars. Um, and so I, I'll, I'll move approval, but I, I do want to kind of get confirmation from staff that we are in fact moving forward with what I think. Uh, has uh, been a request of multiple council members, including myself uh, and uh, the vice mayor, and that's that we, when this expires, um, are looking to enter into uh, a more thoughtful agreement with the homeless center to uh, accomplish the goals related to, uh, accomplish the goals we're trying to accomplish here. So um, I just want to ensure that because I, I figure we have uh, at least two months now before the expiration of this, as I understood it was just a three-month program, I believe. Um, I just want to make sure that we're starting the work now to make sure that we're talking to the Homeless Center and ironing out any details we might need to iron out so that they are ready to uh, carry the baton once this is over. Uh, I'll move approval. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Our next item is the public hearing. Before I open the public hearing, I'll go over the presentation time policy. Each side is allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers, so it's important that you identify yourself, make your statement uh, quickly, and move on. We'll hear statements first from those opposed to staff's recommendation, then we'll hear from those who are in favor of staff's recommendation. If there's testimony on both sides, there will be a five-minute rebuttal for each side. There's a clock on the two TV screens behind me, which indicates 15 minutes. Step to the microphone and then identify yourself, and after 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on, and at the end of 15, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up. And you may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be answered until the public public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give those to the clerk and she'll provide copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Unless there's approval by the majority of the council, there's a strict 15 minute time limit for all those in favor or in opposition to staff's recommendations. So uh, please be concise and avoid repeating yourself. Madam Clerk, would you please read the first public hearing item? Item A, appeal by Keith Lawless of the September 10, 2019 decision of the Board of Zoning Adjustment to approve a conditional use permit to allow an indoor banquet venue in the C1 Neighborhood Commercial Zone District located at 2520 Brundage Lane. We have received a staff memorandum regarding this item, transmitting correspondence. Thank you. Mr. Coyle, would you like to address this? Yes, Madam Mayor. Madam Clerk, could you please pull up the presentation, please? Madam Mayor and members of council, we are here tonight to hear an appeal for conditional use permit 19-0278 
which was a request to allow an indoor banquet venue located at 2520 Brundage Lane. The venue itself is zoned Z C1 and the proposed parking area is zoned C1 and R1 parking. I'm having a little trouble driving the presentation this evening. Development in this area consists of the site, which is a vacant building, uh, previously a tire shop and auto stereo installation. And there is also a new parking lot being proposed to the west of the venue uh, on undeveloped land. To the north of the project site is single family residential. To the east is the Los Molcajetes restaurant. To the south is a car wash and auto repair, and to the west is general commercial. The applicant is proposing development on the eastern parcel. Half of the building would be used for the indoor banquet venue. The other half of the building would provide indoor valet parking for nine spaces. There are 20 surface parking spaces uh, at that existing facility. Development on the western parcel is proposed for a 36 space parking lot. Uh, there would actually be 48 spaces because there are 12 spaces already dedicated to the existing commercial facility on that site. I believe it's a hair salon and a nail salon. In addition, there are 11 on-street parking spaces so there are a total of 76 spaces being provided where 74 are required. This project was considered by the Board of Zoning Adjustment on September 10th. At that meeting, the board considered public testimony both in support and opposition. The project was approved, but based on the comments received, the board required several additional uh, conditions. One was a uniform private security officer be on the premises during events at the ratio of one officer per every 50 guests. Additional landscaping is to be provided along the parking lot adjacent to the residential property. And staff is to provide the Board of Zoning Adjustment with a one-year update on events and compliance with the conditions. This decision was subsequently appealed by a neighboring property owner. There are two findings your council must make to approve a conditional use permit. Those are listed in the admin report and on the screen. Should your council determine the findings can be made, the project can be subject to conditions. Staff's recommended conditions are listed in the resolution, which is attached to the admin report. Given the evidence in the record to date, staff recommends upholding the decision of the Board of Zoning Adjustment and approving the conditional use permit. This concludes my staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. How many people would like to speak in opposition to Steph's recommendation? Just raise your hands. One, two. Okay. Uh, would you please come to the microphone and identify yourself and proceed? Hello. My name's Keith Lawless. I'm the person who actually appealed the uh, decision. Uh, the last time I was in a city council meeting was actually because of this business over a conditional use permit. A stereo shop was there in that same location. And the, uh, the noise that emitted from that building disturbed the entire neighborhood. Now they want to put, basically drop a nightclub into our neighborhood. The parking lot that they're proposing backs up against three of my properties. I live in one of them. Uh, so I have, I have great experience with this building. I also have great experience with Los Mocajetes, who is the owner of the building and who's proposing this. Um, 
They're a great business. They're great people. Nothing against them. I love eating there, actually. But they, uh, they have parking issues where they're parking now. I counted two weeks ago on a Thursday night, 31 cars on the street. Uh, Friday night, it was like 20, and over the weekend, it was about 10. So the parking lot they're proposing is great if it's going to be for the restaurant. Now they're going to drop 300 or 296 people, I think it is, that this venue can hold and 76 spaces, and I don't believe that they even took into account Mocahete's parking issue because they're two separate businesses. So they're squeezing a lot of business into two parcels and a 36 parking lot, is that what you said, 36 more spaces? And then they're gonna also add another commercial building on that space. Uh, this isn't fair for the neighbors. I've lived in my home for 25 years. The last time I was in here, Sue Benham was my rep, and it was, it was over this exact same building. This is unacceptable for the neighborhood. It, I don't even think a fire truck would fit down the street when they fill this restaurant up. Um, th th that's pretty much my argument is the noise. Oh, one more thing. They said that it was uh, licensed security or armed security. I read the, the memorandum that they sent out and it was staff that was hired by their employees. It could be a busboy wearing a staff shirt, I guess, is their security. But my bedroom is 20 feet from this parking lot, literally 20 feet, and I'm going to have to deal with it. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to speak in opposition? Please come forward. Please introduce yourself. My name is Greg Carlon, and I reside at 110 Pine Street. I've been there over 18 years, and what the gentleman was saying was the parking. It is horrible now with the restaurant. The way I read the blueprint, there is going to be a total of 65 parking stalls. That includes there at the banquet facility and across the street. The venue. The capacity has a total of 268 people. That's going to cause a safety hazard. The entrance and exit to that parking lot is going to be facing my property. There's no crosswalk there. The, there's not even a crosswalk at the corner of Brundage and Pine. Undoubtedly, they, the people will be crisscrossing Pine Street, which is going to create a tremendous safety problem. The noise level will increase tremendously. Undoubtedly, there will be selling alcohol, which will cause vandalism, theft. And I'm 77 years old. I have heart problems. I'm a diabetic with high cholesterol and I can't handle or being driven out of my neighborhood, which I've been there for 18 years. So I'm here to oppose it. And thank you for hearing my concerns. Thank you for sharing. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Uh, you've already completed your portion. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, how many of you would like to speak in favor of staff's recommendation? One, two, three. Okay, uh, go ahead and come forward. Um. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. I'm Timothy Stormont. I'm the architect for the, uh, the owners of Los Mocahetas. And one of the big considerations in the whole design parameter of this is that we relieve the on-street parking issue and that, and that we deal with the problem of the, the neighborhood being overcrowded, which is why the owners of Los Mocahetas have gone forward and from buying their restaurant from a lease, they've now, over the last seven years, have also bought the vacant building and have bought the property on Pine Street. 
which we have considered and done a master plan for over the course of that seven years to provide parking that would relieve the issue. These are not two businesses as has been presented by the opposition. These are one business being run by Los Mocajetes. It is not another kitchen. They will be, they will be supplying this from the kitchen next door. It is merely a, a dining facility and because of the rules that, that uh, govern planning and building, that's what establishes the parking and the occupant loads. This is mainly a banquet facility. They have the hours spelled out to be no later than 10 o'clock on weekdays, no later than 12 o'clock on weekends. And one of the complaints uh, at the planning meeting was that, oh, well, people are going to congregate in that parking lot after hours and cause trouble in the neighborhood. So in consideration of that, in this last pass through, I presented planning with a revised plan that showed us fencing it off so it could be locked up after hours so that that's not going to be an issue. And um, we provided the off-street parking the crosswalks will be dealt with at Brundage. That is part of the plan. Uh, if we can get some cooperation with street improvement on Brundage that's coming up, that would be great. But if not, that would be part of the development plan. And uh, this would be limited really to closer to about 130 people in a dining situation. The 268 is if you had seven square feet per person, which is required by the code if you don't have fixed furniture. So if it would be a, an assembly area with no tables and chairs, yes, you could crowd that many people in there, and yes, we did provide enough parking for it, but if it's used as a dining facility, which is the, the main purpose of this, we're only talking 140 people operating within the proper business hours, relieving the, uh, the on-street parking issue. And if there is noise and issues after hours, that should be dealt with either by the ownership if it's related to, to the business or the police department if it's related to the neighborhood. So I don't see why they should be penalized for trying to improve a semi-blighted area on Brundage when they're trying to relieve the problems, not add to them. Thank you, Mr. Stormont. Who else would like to speak in support of staff's recommendation? Please come forward. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Will Wynn. My wife and I own the property at 100 Pine, which is immediately <coughs> adjacent to the actual proposed site for the, uh, for the uh, event center that uh, the applicants want to put in. Um, I agree entirely with uh, Mr. Lawless. The, um, the applicants have been wonderful neighbors to us. We have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, actually, if there's a noise problem, it probably was my renters rather than, than the restaurant, which we've tried to take care of and, and has been a problem for Mr. Conlon and his wife as well. We're trying to deal with that. With that. Um, one of the things that I know is that after the applicants purchased that property, I believe in 2015, it really was a blight and it was covered with all kinds of construction materials and trash and litter and they have totally cleaned that up uh, as well as a, a gigantic 40-foot RV that was just sitting there uh, that wasn't running. Um, that has been a, a very good experience with them. They removed that RV. The existing restaurant has been said very popular venue for Mexican food. If you haven't tried it, uh, do that. Um, we have found that uh, it's, it's a very good experience. However, because of the popularity, the parking does spill over on the residential streets. And uh, one of the things that's happening, and of course one of the benefits of this development, is that the applicants have purchased property to try to create additional parking to alleviate and mitigate that problem. 
It's too bad you can't mitigate the, the conflict between residential and commercial development always, but I believe that, that this particular proposal uh, of the event center and what uh, the applicants are proposing is going to be a very good fit. I'm really looking forward to it. Right now, the vacant lot that will be a landscaped paved parking lot with block walls all the way around it uh, certainly could be considered part of the beautification of Bakersfield if you want to consider that. But one of the, th one of the things that doesn't come up in this, and I guess it's probably my Rhodes background, uh, is that the applicants will be uh, installing new curb and gutter and sidewalk on the west side of Pine in front of our home. And also, uh, there's going to be some repair of what is now a driveway um, curb and gutter that has actually settled and has not allowing uh, residential drainage to get down to the drop inlet box down at Brundage. Uh, as a result, we get a puddle in front of our house all the time, which of course is a West Nile virus mosquito issue. So I, I'm just saying that my wife and I, we're thoroughly uh, in agreement with uh, encouraging you to uh, go ahead and approve this project and uh, to agree with the staff on that. Uh, I feel it is a very good thing for our area and I'm looking forward to the improvements that it's going to make. And so I thank you for your time and I hope that uh, this will meet with your approval and hopefully that the mesh between the commercial and the residential issues uh, with the folks that object um, can be resolved hopefully by virtue of uh, what will really happen, transpire there in, on this property and some of the things that they're going to be doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in support or favor of staff's recommendation on this issue? Seeing none, is there anybody who wishes to rebut? We have a five-minute opportunity for a rebuttal. Seeing none, at this time, I'll close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to ask staff a few questions. You know, the, the, the concerns I've heard um, from Mr. Lawless and a few others uh, really boil down to three things. One is sound, security, and then finally, of course, parking. And I want to thank Mr. Lawless for contacting me uh, prior to tonight's meeting and, and as well as others in the community who are in support. Um, in the staff report, I did uh, read that uh, the applicant is willing to include soundproofing to the building. Can you speak to that? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and um, regarding security, there was a question about the the security guards that would be provided, but they have to be profit, uh, properly um, licensed and certified. Is that correct? Yes, that is also correct. Okay. Uniformed security. Okay, and as was mentioned by um, uh, Mr. Stormont, uh, the, the parking facility will be secured with the rolling gate. That is also correct, Councilman. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate the concerns. Um, I, I also read in the report that um, the BZA has asked uh, and required uh, the staff to return in one year with an update on any complaints that have arisen as a result of the banquet venue. Is that still correct? Yes, next September they will be providing us with a one-year report. Okay, well given that, then I'd like to make the motion uh, <coughs> that, uh, that the council adopt the resolution upholding this decision made by the BZA. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. I don't see any other requests to speak, so you have a motion. Please cast your votes. motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next hearing item, please, Madam Clerk. Item B, public hearing to consider resolution setting domestic water avail availability fee for service areas of the City of Bakersfield domestic water system. Thank you. Mr. Tandy, is Mr. Cianello addressing this?
Well, good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor and uh, members of the Council. Um, the item before you tonight is a public hearing uh, to consider a resolution uh, setting the domestic water availability fees um, for the service area um, within the City of Bakersfield's domestic water service area, which is basically from uh, Stein Road West, uh, both north and south uh, parts of Bakersfield, um, which consists of about 47,000 uh, meter connections as a size right now. This is not anything associated with a monthly rate increase. This is uh, for um, cost of development for new water wells, um, new pipes, new storage tanks. Um, basically, it's a mechanism, the water availability fee, where new growth pays for growth in our domestic water system. Um, the Bakersfield Municipal Code asks us to review um, and adjust accordingly, uh, whether up or down, uh, per a certain index um, to adjust it for um, the cost of living um, or, the, or the CPI. Um, so we did that review, and um, over the last 12 months, the adjustment um, came out to be 1.91%. <clears throat> so that would make our uh, water availability fee, which is currently $6,054 per gross acre, um, increase uh, by 1.91% to $6,169 per gross acre. And if we assume approximately four um, uh, dwelling units per acre, uh, that's the that, that's a cost of about twenty eight dollars and seventy five cents per dwelling unit, a one time cost for new development. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But uh, with that, um, we're asking uh, City Council to um, uh, review and approve uh, the resolution, allowing us to um, adjust the water availability fee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chianello. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. How many people would like to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Seeing none, how many people would like to speak in favor or support of staff's recommendation? Seeing none, I'll return it to council for comment and action. Vice Mayor. Motion to approve hearing item B, as in boy. I don't see any uh, requests to speak, so you have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And that item is closed. Next item, please. Under reports, we have an update from the city, from the city council ad hoc committee related to the recruitment efforts for the position of city manager. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Freeman, who is also on the ad hoc committee, would like to give this presentation, but uh, when he's done, I just want to confirm some dates with some council members. Thank you. Okay, well, I'd be glad to give the update. Um, the position advertisement and brochure is, is out. Is it on our website? It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's a great description of the city, of the job opportunity. Uh, I think it highlights that this is a this is a job with the city moving forward and really kind of a great opportunity uh, to lead the city for the next 10 years. So I'm expecting to get a number of very qualified applicants and look forward to uh, seeing the resumes come in. Um, the three key dates in the future will be December 16th, uh, where the council, the entire council will meet and review the pop, top five to 10 resumes of, of the top five to ten um, candidates uh, as recommended if you know there might be 50 resumes but as recommended by our consultants they'll narrow it down to you know, they may bring 12 and we could bring 15 but a manageable group that our council can then weed through analyze and um, boil down to maybe the, the the best five six some number like that that we will then schedule interviews with the interviews are scheduled for January 13th. That may take all day, and that's okay. Uh, we would like to um, uh, narrow that down to the very next day. It may be the top one, two, certainly no more than three candidates that we can then re-interview and at the conclusion of that meet and hopefully decide on one 
and make an offer. So that might take another couple of days to construct an offer, but that if, if, we, if we vote for the best one on January 14th and we have to construct an offer, we ought to be hopefully done with this process by mid-January and, and hopefully have a new city manager on board shortly thereafter. So that's the schedule. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. It's extremely important for all the council members to be here for the December 16th, along with the January 13th and 14th. The city attorney sent out a email on it and hasn't heard a response back as far as people not being available. So if there is a conflict, please reach out immediately so we can figure something out. Thank you. Thank you. Any requests to speak? Comments? Okay. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Under deferred business, ordinances amending section 17.04.539, section 17.58.110, and chapter 17.65 of the Bakersfield Municipal Code relating to accessory dwelling units. There are two options. Number one, adopt two ordinances regarding accessory dwelling units. One, reducing parking requirement for accessory dwelling units. And two, waiving all impact fees and removing the owner occupancy requirement for accessory dwelling units. These ordinances received first reading on September 11, 2019. Option two, first reading of ordinance mirroring state law regarding accessory dwelling units. A staff memorandum was provided transmitting correspondence regarding this item. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. Yes, Madam Mayor. Madam Clerk, could you bring up the next presentation, please? Item 12A is accessory dwelling units. First, we provide a definition of an accessory dwelling unit from the California Government Code. I will not read this, but give counsel and the audience an, a few seconds to read it. Typically, we find uh, ADUs in urban areas where affordable housing is extremely limited. and uh, ADUs are typically uh, garage conversions in addition to an existing home or uh, some of the newer homes are being constructed with an accessory dwelling unit already part of that, uh, of that house. And under state law, uh, I, I should just mention that this was prior to uh, the October 9 signing of uh, the state legislation, so I'm not entirely sure that these still uh, would apply. We started with a September 5th, 2018 referral from Councilman Smith, who, uh, who asked us to take a look at accessory dwelling units. In July of 2019, we discussed the matter at a planning and development committee meeting and staff was uh, directed to prepare a draft ordinance to bring forward to city council. On September 5th, 2019, we took that uh, draft text amendment to the planning commission and they voted to recommend option one and send that to city council for adoption. Uh, on September 11th, 2019, option one uh, was brought before city council, but based on testimony from uh, some of the people at that hearing, Councilman Freeman made his motion to uh, continue the topic and uh, bring forward option two. And then on October 9th of this year, Governor Newsom signed three bills into law, Assembly Bills 68 and 881, and Senate Bill 13. These are just a few of the highlights of those three pieces of legislation. 
very similar. And options one and two incorporated uh, the language from these three pieces of legislation. So option one uh, changes the definition of an accessory dwelling unit, uh, addresses parking, uh, the size. Uh, in this case, there is no owner occupancy requirement. And the other uh, point to make is that there would be no traffic impact fees and uh, sewer connection fees would be based on the number of fixtures. Option two, the definition, parking and size are the same as option one, but now owner occupancy would reflect uh, Senate Bill 13, which says that after January 1 of 2025, there would be a requirement that the owner live in one of those two units. And then uh, with regard to fees, uh, accessory dwelling units would pay impact and connection fees in accordance with California government code as may be amended from time to time. So the following two options are being submitted for your consideration this evening. Either adopt option one or conduct your first reading of the option two ordinance. This concludes my staff report. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. Vice Mayor. I move option one. We have discussion here. Councilmember Freeman. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I've um, <clears throat> thought a lot about this. My objection at the last meeting to option one uh, was that I, I really think that the, uh, there should be owner occupancy required of this, and, and here's why. And I know the state has taken that away for the next five years. So I acknowledge that for the next five years, that isn't a requirement. However, rental pr in, when people buy into single family neighborhood, there's sort of a covenant and an expectation that it will remain a single family <coughs> neighborhood. Um, it has a certain atmosphere design and, and there's an expectation as some of their people say, it's kind of an R1 neighborhood. That's what they pay for. That, and, and I think that's kind of a deal with the city. Um, the state took that away from us with their laws. They just top down took it away from us. Um, so that yes, now when anyone can add an accessory dwelling unit, it is a multifamily neighborhood and we don't, we can't change that. What the concerns me is, you know, when you have a rental next to you, as I've had for the last 10 to 12 years in a nice neighborhood, um, and nothing against renters, I was a renter once, but there just is not the same maintenance of the property. You know, you have the minimum landscaping, the minimum painting, sometimes you got 12 cars in the driveway and on the street, multiple people there, it just isn't quite the same. Uh, people, you know, come in and out, they're not attached to the property. Um, and the thought that we would now make that into a double uh, uh, multiple occupancy property, it'd be two rentals next door. If there's no owner occupancy requirement, then the original owner's gone, he's renting. There's an accessory dwelling unit that's being rented, and that I think that will change the neighborhood even more. So I was against the state doing that, and um, I'm really against us uh, sort of cementing that in place. So my thought, um, which I guess would be a different motion, or should I wait and we'll debate on the first motion? Uh, I would make a a motion also that we adopt option one with some modification. Um, well first of all, I haven't had any calls complaining about the fees, not one. Uh, and I think they provide an incentive for us to get more affordable housing. So I'm totally in favor of waiving as many fees as we can. Uh, but option one, if we altered the language to say, after January 1st, 2025, uh, we will revert to requiring owner occupancy of these ADUs. That's the only change I would make to option one. 
So that would be my proposal or my motion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other comments? So we'll take uh, Council Member Freeman's motion first. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. Motion fails with Vice Mayor Chris Parlier voting no, Councilmember Rivera, Gonzalez, and Smith voting no, Councilmember Bruce Freeman and Jackie Sullivan voting yes. Okay, thank you. And so at this point, um, any other comments before we move on to the Vice Mayor's motion? You have a motion, please catch, oh, Council Member Smith. Thank you, I, I just would address the owner occupancy. And if, if it, I mean, we've got five years. If it does become a problem, we can certainly change our ordinance at any time and, it, and we've had the first reading and it seems wise to go forward with what we've had. Thank you. Anyone else? You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is approved with Councilmember Freeman voting no. Thank you. Next item, please. Council and Mayor Statements. Councilmember Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've made a few motions on this in the past, and something that continues to frustrate me to no end is the presence of shopping carts, um, certainly in Southeast Bakersfield. So I've had some conversations now with uh, the city attorney on the feasibility of uh, some ordinance language banning the use of shopping carts in um, parks, in city parks, and I'd like to make uh, a referral to the Legend Lit Committee that they uh, further uh, review that and uh, determine whether or not it's appropriate and potentially bring something back to the council. Thank you. Council member, anything else? Council member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things that was in our general info that the city water resources department uh, reported that the improvement district number four Kern County Water Agency will be running water in the Kern River Channel for a couple months and, and I just think it's a great example of two governmental agencies working together and, and we appreciate the, the water agency uh, running water in the river and, and recharging our, our groundwater with us. Uh, also wanted to give a uh, notice of appreciation to the people doing the marathon and, and staff working with uh, marathons coming up again, the Bakersfield Marathon and that's a great community asset and encourages health in the community and, and brings people to the community and, and took a lot of effort to get that off the ground in the beginning and appreciate staff continuing to work. Uh, one other item, uh, Highway 46 uh, we've been working on over the years along with Caltrans and Kern Cog to get improvements. Uh, we, we have a lot of freight coming and going from the coast and, and we make a lot of trips to the coast and Caltrans is, is trying to cut that and uh, if we could have a resolution from the city council uh, stating that we want to keep those Highway 46 improvements, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to refer an item to legend lit and it's regarding junk vehicles i think there might be a need for some cleanup within the code to talk about that so i want to chat about that a little bit in committee next tuesday october 29th myself and councilman rivera are holding our annual trunk or treat at plans park so come on out enjoy the fun thanks thank you anyone else We've had the pleasure this last week of having a delegation of students, 17 students from San Jean de Luz, 
France, along with five educators, and they've been visiting with us, homestays. Uh, last summer, we sent 12 of our students there, and we're exploring the uh, possibility of a sister city relationship, and they presented us with this, uh, it's really a beret that is given typically to the winner of the Pelota contest. So it, this is uh, the champion's beret. They're here tonight, and some of us will be joining them uh, for a goodbye celebration. But we are just so grateful for our sister cities and our sister city committee that allows us to explore and have these wonderful cultural relations. Uh, Ms. Hoover also went with us, and uh, Council Member uh, Gonzalez uh, attended our uh, visit to San Juan de Luz, and we are so glad to have them here. And so tonight, in honor of our friends from San Juan de Luz, I'll be adjourning the council meeting at 641 in their honor and in celebration of our friendship. We are adjourned at 641.